In this video, we're going to look at a word problem involving vectors. So let's go ahead and read the story problem here. It says a plane is traveling at 400 miles per hour at a bearing of 200 degrees when a 30 mile per hour wind starts blowing out of the west. Find the resultant speed and direction of the plane. So this is a common uh, problem that you see when you're working with vectors. And so let's see if we can sketch it out. So the first thing I would do is uh, draw a coordinate axis and I'll label this north, east, south, and west. And when you find the bearing, what you want to do is you want to start facing north and you want to go clockwise, whatever the bearing is. So in this case, a bearing of 200, we'd start here facing north, we'd rotate 90, 180, plus 20 more, so roughly like this. Okay, that, that's 20 degrees. And that's our plane and it's heading uh, with a speed of 400 miles per hour. Now the wind is coming out of the west. All of a sudden it picks up and it starts blowing out of the west. That means it's actually heading towards the east and that is at 30 miles per hour. So we're going to represent that with a slightly uh, shorter vector, okay, because it's a smaller force or smaller magnitude. And remember the way that vectors work though, it's head to tail where one ends, the other begins. So if I take this 30, uh, 30 vector here and I slide it down and to the left such that where this vector ends, the 30 mile per hour wind begins, our resultant vector is going to look something like this. Okay, so basically what it's doing is the wind is kind of pushing or, or blowing the uh, plane a little bit off course. Okay, and so now what we can do is let's go ahead and write these two vectors in component form. So for the plane, what we need to do is we need to write it in the xy uh, component form, but you see how the bearing was from north clockwise, but when we work with these uh, vectors in component form, we're going to have to figure out how to find that angle counterclockwise from the positive x-axis. So this is actually going to be 90, 180, plus 70 more. That's actually 250 degrees. So I'm going to take the magnitude, which is 400, times the cosine of 250 degrees, and the magnitude 400 times the sine of 250 degrees uh, to put this into its x and y component form. So I'm going to go to the calculator on this just to uh, put this into a decimal form. Make sure your calculator is in degrees. And we've got 400 cosine 250 and 400 sine 250. So it looks like we've got our vector is here at a negative 136.81. Comma negative 375.88, just rounding to the nearest hundredth. Okay, so that's what this vector is right here. And that makes sense because you're going left 136, down 375, and then there's our resultant vector 400. Now for the wind, we're just going just this direction here to the right. Okay, there's not a vertical component, just this horizontal component of 30. So that vector is just going to be 30 in the x direction, uh, 0 in the y direction. We're going to add these two vectors together, the x components and the y components. So let's go ahead and do that. So that's going to be, uh, let's see, negative 106.81 comma, anything plus zero is itself, negative 375.88. So this is our resultant vector. Now to find the magnitude or the speed of the plane, we're going to have to take the x component squared plus the y component squared, add them together and take the square root. So let me go ahead and uh, write that down here. So we've got the square root of negative 106.81 squared. That's the horizontal component squared. This is just based on the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And then take the square root to find c, the hypotenuse. So I'm going to use the, the numbers that came up on the calculator here. So let's see, this is, okay, well here I'll just use the rounded one. So, so we'll do this negative 106.81 squared. Uh, plus 375.88 squared. Okay, add those together, take the square root. Okay, so I'm getting 390.76. So that's how many miles per hour the plane is going to be traveling at now, because the wind is actually slowing down the plane a little bit. It's kind of opposing, you know, the plane. So 390.76 miles per hour, okay. And now as far as the direction, we can do the tangent inverse of y over x to get our direction. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got theta equals tangent inverse of y over x. 
that's going to be the tangent inverse of negative uh, 375.88 divided by negative 106.81. We do that on the calculator. So tangent inverse, make sure mode is in degrees for this one. Okay, and I am getting 74.14. Okay, so we'll say 74.14 degrees, but now when you say, well, 74.14 degrees, that's gonna be like right here. Okay, 74.14 degrees. But you can see the plane is actually going here in the third quadrant. Now you might be saying, Mario, why is that? Why did it give us the wrong answer? Well, remember, tangent inverse, it's restricted from negative 90 to positive 90. So that's why it's giving us that answer, but we can see that it's here in the third quadrant. We have to actually add 180 degrees to get this you know angle here. So I'm just going to do that. That's plus 180. So it would actually be uh, 254.14 degrees. But to complicate matters further, if we want to list it as a bearing, we have to uh, list it as an angle clockwise from north, right? So let's think of this for a minute. So 74.14, that's this angle right here. This angle right here is also going to be 74.14. So that means that uh, this angle right here is 90 minus 70 point, uh, 90 minus 74.14. It's uh, 15.86. That's this angle right uh, to, to the direction that the plane is going right now, 15.86. So I'm going to go 90, 180 plus another 15.86, which gives us how much? 195.86. So the actual bearing would be from north, okay, 195.86 degrees. Now, another way to list the bearing is you can either start facing north or south and then rotate towards the east or the west. So in this case, I'm closer to the southerly direction, so I could say I'm heading south and then I'm going 15.86 degrees towards the west. That's another way to write the bearing. Or if you just say 195.86 degrees, the reader will know that that's actually going to be clockwise from north. So great job if you're able to follow this example. If you want to learn more about vectors, I'll put an introduction to vectors video that, that I did talking about magnitude and direction and other aspects of working with vectors right there. So follow me that video. We'll get some more practice. I'll see you there.